The dark side of internet subcultures, that is the topic of tonight's byline. Listen, I'm not going to spend the entire program talking about this sick, twisted freak. But the fact is that he's wanted for such heinous crimes that it means he needs to be exposed. He needs to be found. So if Luca Magnata is not your cup of tea, you don't want to hear about it, stick around. Luca Magnata or Eric Clinton or Kirk Newman or Vladimir Romanov obviously has serious mental problems. He's known by several names. As you know, he spent a lot of time online. He supposedly killed kittens and posted the video online. He fancied himself a male model and a porn star. He had vanity photos and videos of himself. He had a large online footprint, you might say. Twitter, Facebook, dating sites, videos, so much more. The video that he posted late last week of what looks to be a murder was posted on a website called Best Gore. And this website features extremely graphic and gory videos on such topics as suicide, torture, and now it seems murder. Magnata posted a video on this site that appears to show him killing, sexually assaulting, then dismembering the body. Is this the body that's been mailed in parts to at least two places with threats of more to come? We don't know. I've refused to watch this video, several friends and colleagues have, and they tell me it's far too real. As one friend said, he will never unsee these horrific images. They will be burned into his brain. See, this stuff is a hazard of the job, unfortunately, for myself, for police work even more so. So please keep any police officers or emergency workers you know in your prayers. The stuff they have to deal with on a daily basis is truly awful. But Magnata takes it to a whole new level. Veterans of police work say they've never seen anything like this. I know I've never reported on anything quite like this. Now what's disturbing here beyond the murder, the blood and the victim, and let's not forget that we have a real murder victim here, but beyond all that, there's the role of the internet in this. Now I love the internet. My entire workday is spent online. I stay in contact with family and friends online. My kids play online and study online. I remember what life was like before the internet and it was great, but that doesn't mean I want to go back. Still. Look at all this guy was doing online and tell me it doesn't spook you. He posted on blogs about how to disappear without a trace and then start a new life. He posted videos of himself killing kittens and then he posted a video of what looks like him killing another person. That's the kind of thing that should get you arrested if instead it got comments. Warning, some of these comments are shocking and contain swear words. Christy Blatchford detailed some of this in her column today. She watched the video and read the comments. People were asking, is it, is it, was this real? And that's understandable, asking if it's real. But people were also asking whether it was better than another video with three guys beating on someone with a hammer. There were discussions about the sound effects in that one and the gurgling for breath, the better qualities of decapitation videos. These were the discussions people were having watching a snuff film online. Truly disturbing. Look, the internet is a great place, but it has some dark corners. These are the places that I fear my kids might find someday, stumble upon them. The dark, twisted sub subcultures that have long existed but are now easier to find due to the ease of communication brought about by the web. I'm not sure that we can stop these sorts of sites from existing on the web, just the way that it's set up doesn't lend itself to that kind of control. But I will say this, if you know someone that lurks in these dark corners, reach out to them. Bring them back into the light. This isn't normal. It's not a normal way to live. And if your loved ones have fallen into this lifestyle, they may need your help to get out. And that's the byline. Joining me now with more on the Magnata case is Roger Renville. He's a lawyer in Montana who actually warned police about the Luca Rocco Magnata video when he first saw it posted on bestgore.com. He says he wasn't taken seriously at the time. Roger joins me now by phone from Hardin, Montana. Uh, tell us, Mr. Renville, what happened? You saw this video and you thought this had to be real and you called up the police in Toronto? Yes, though it didn't happen that quickly. I saw the video at 8 o'clock, uh, about 8 o'clock Saturday morning, and uh, was immediately persuaded myself that it was real, that it was a crime being witnessed on video, uh, loaded on the Internet. And I um, 
went back to my work, put it out of my mind as much as I could for the next few hours, which I wasn't very successful at. I went back to it in the middle of the afternoon and started trying to determine whether um, it really was a recent murder and whether um, whether anybody uh, had brought it to the attention of the authorities. And um, when I couldn't satisfy myself that uh, that it had been reported anywhere, that it was currently under investigation, I um, started trying to call law enforcement. Uh, I, I started with the local sheriff's office with the simple question, how would you report a murder that you witnessed online? And um, from there I went through um, a couple of FBI phone numbers and FBI um, tip line online, an FBI uh, agent in Denver, Colorado, a police department in Denver, Colorado, police department in Miami, Florida. Wow. And um, eventually by the middle of the day Sunday, um, I called the Toronto Police Department. Though I should note that uh, the Toronto Police Department has um, called me today, and I think that they are, I think they put out a statement saying that my call came in um, later, the, later in the evening than I remember. They're saying it came in about 10 o'clock that night. My recollection and my computer records show um, the middle of the day. And uh, uh, I'm not it, the, about the time, the, yeah, the timing is uh, is a matter yeah, for quibbling. Exactly. So. Uh, I have to ask you this, though, before we let you go. It's just fascinating that you did this and it didn't... You could have tipped them off earlier. Uh, what brings someone to hang out on a website that promotes videos of, of suicide and, and gore and, and such? Well, I, uh, I'm not someone who hangs out on such websites myself. I visit them now and then, interested to see um, this... Uh, um, more uh, uncensored view of the world around us. And some of it's ugly and some of it's um, just interesting. And some of it um, even has, uh, you know, greater information value. For instance, you know, are the atrocities being reported in Syria being committed by government troops or Free Syria, uh, Free Syria Army troops or Al-Qaeda? You know, those are the kind of controversies that attend some of these videos uh, loaded on that site in particular. Given, given that it is such wi wild and uncensored, uh, is this an area where police should be going to look more often to, to see if there are oh. real things being posted? Well, you know, I've always assumed that, that you know, police officer here or there is always keeping an eye on this stuff. I mean, um, um, you, and, you know, there's more of a connection than that, too. That, you know, the, the, some of these graphic type uh, videos and photos and stuff originate with police officers, crime scene technicians, um, responding police officers, um, dispatchers, et cetera. And um, so I'm sure that the police world, the police community in general, is familiar with the uh, graphic video community in general. All right, Mr. Renville, thanks for joining us today and bringing this side of the story. Joining me now is Brent Turvey. He's a forensic uh, scientist and author of Criminal Profiling, joins us via Skype from Sitka, Alaska. Mr. Turvey, thanks so much. Um, I, I, I guess I have to start with the fact of this gentleman having such a, a, a large online profile, obviously wanting people to, to watch him. What does that tell you about who uh, police are now looking for? Well, to me, it doesn't distinguish that particular feature of this individual's activity and personality. It does not distinguish them at all from the majority of celebrities who are, or wannabe celebrities who are out there. If we separate the, the homicide, the inference of homicide, and the suspicion of homicide, and the video from him, it doesn't look all that different from any other famous person in the last 10 years who's followed this particular path, creating their own online media buzz and creating their own presence and trying to get their name out there in any way that they can. It's actually pretty common. If you go online right now, you can find hundreds, if not thousands, of other individuals just like him doing exactly the same thing who aren't suspected of homicide. Okay. So it does, it's, not, it's not a distinguishing set of activities. It's only interesting now that we've... Now, 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 a now there's, there's a suspicion of homicide and, and a video of what appears to be a murder posted. I, he is being sought by police. Uh, if you're advising them on, on how to go about hunting them down, what would you be saying? Because we've heard uh, reports that he could be in France. I've been told right. from someone who has been speaking with uh, sources close to the investigation that there's actually been no hits on his passport. Uh, a woman right. saying she dropped him off hitchhiking on a highway to, that he was headed towards Toronto or Ottawa. What, what would you be telling them? 
what I would be telling them is something I hopefully they hopefully they already know. If you're dealing with a depends on their level of professionalism. Unprofessional, inexperienced officers will run after every tip that they get that, that comes through the door, and they'll run after this video like it's the real deal. Uh, the real danger is uh, most people don't know what a dismemberment looks like. They don't know what a homicide looks like. Most police officers have never seen one. Uh, the first thing to do is to determine whether or not this video is actually real. The second thing is to connect, to do the victimology on the victim, to find out the, the timeline, their background, the timeline, their activities prior to their death, and see if that timeline of activities intersects with the timeline of the suspect. And then the next thing is to make sure that they have comprehensively evaluated the physical evidence in this case, from the actual body parts themselves that were sent around to the packaging material, uh, to the mechanism by which they were sent, uh, by which they were posted. All these things will, will provide important physical evidence that can then be linked back to any suspect that's developed. Uh, one of the great dangers that I see is, again, a lot of people who are completely unknowledgeable about homicide and dismemberment and crime in general commenting about this case as though it's already solved, as though this guy must have done it, and as though this video must be real. Those aren't the assumptions that professional law enforcement investigators can make. They have to investigate and establish the truth of the video, and then they have to establish the connection between the video and the actual suspect. So my advice would be proceed with caution, ignore the media. Uh, the problem with the media is that it tends to take the ball and run with the more salacious uh, aspects of the case. And this case has a lot of really salacious imagery and, and information associated with it. That, uh, uh, well, it, it definitely do does, and they shouldn't do. <laughs> definitely does, and definitely stuff that lots of us have never seen before. Mr. Turvey, thanks so much for joining us today. No problem. Thanks, Brent Turvey in Alaska. He is the author of Criminal Profiling.